Let's all stand in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, once again, oh God, we thank you for the privilege that you have given to us, that we can come and gather together as your people to lift our voices to praise and to worship the great and mighty God of heaven and earth. Father, we thank you, God. Your word said, let everything that had breath praise the Lord. And Lord, we know that we have breath this morning because we are standing before you. So we're going to lift our hearts and praise you and worship the great and mighty God. Father, we thank you, God, for guiding us and protecting us through the past week. Father, we know that although we live in difficult times, you are the only one, O oh God, to guide us and protect us. Because no matter how safe we try to be, Many times we slip up, but you are always there for us, taking us through, guiding us every step of the way. For your word said, the steps of a righteous man is ordered by the Lord when you delight in him. And so we thank you for delighting in us, Father. We thank you, God, for the praise and worship team this morning. We thank you, God, for the youths. We thank you, God, for the calling that you have placed upon their hearts. And as they lead us in praise and worship, O oh God, let our praises ascend to you as a sweet smelling cigar. As our praises go up, Lord, your glory will come and fill this place, that each and every life would be touched, each and every heart would be ministered to. We lift up each and every one who else in our ministry, Father. We ask, for oh God, that you continue to anoint them, that as they do the things that are needed, Father, it would be done with a spirit of love, compassion, and your grace. Father, we thank you for your servant who have to minister your word. Once again, Father, we ask, O oh God, your anointing, O oh God, upon your servant, that as your word come forth, O oh God, mindsets would be broken. Lord, hardness of hearts would be plowed up, and your word would fall on good ground that would bear fruit that would last. And so, Father, we thank you so much, O oh God, for the privilege that you have given to us, that we can come and gather together, Father, without, O oh God, needing to hide, without needing, O oh God, to, to take chances, Father. But you have given us the freedom to come, Father. What a privilege you have given to us, Father. Lord, we are so blessed because we know that there are brothers and sisters in Christ who have to hide underground, Father. They have a God to do it in secret, but you have given us the opportunity to do it openly, Father. And so we thank you this morning. We thank you for everything that you're going to do here this morning because we know that you are here by the power and might of your blessed Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit of God, we thank you for your presence because you said wheresoever two or three are gathered together in your name, there you are in the midst. So we, are know, we know that we have your presence here with us. We have that assurance. And Father, we thank you, God, for Jesus. Lord Jesus, if you didn't do what you did for us on Calvary, we wouldn't be here this morning. We don't know where we would have been, Father. But one thing we know, God, that Jesus Christ is our solid rock and we stand on him. And so we give you praise and thanks this morning for our brothers and sisters, each and every one who you have brought out here this morning. We thank you for bringing each and every one safely. Those who are on their way, we ask that you bring them, Father, in safety. And so as we join our hearts to praise and worship you in one accord, Father, we thank you for what you're going to do here. Because, oh God, you are here by your power, by the might and power of your blessed Holy Spirit to heal, to save, and to deliver. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. You can tell someone Hallelujah. you're glad to be in the house this morning. Glad Praise to be in the house of the Lord, Lord this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Praise oh. God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise and thanks, Lord, for who you are. We glorify you. We magnify your name. Oh, we delight to be with you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glorify you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Oh, we praise your name. Can we just get some more sound on the guitar? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.
Rejoice in Him, rejoice in Him, more than 
Hallelujah. Oh, you're worthy, God. Oh, we bless you. We bless you, Lord. my drums <laughs> hallelujah sing with understanding amen hallelujah sing with me without my musicians once you have spoken once you have spoken let that get deep down twice I have heard all power belongs to you Lord and when you've spoken Surely comes to pass. All power, and when you've spoken, when you've spoken, oh, and when you have spoken, twice I have heard. All power. What is it that God has said? What is it that is taking long? Understand that when He has spoken. It surely comes to pass. Oh, power. Sing it out once you have spoken, God. Once you have spoken, once you have spoken. Oh, and twice I have heard that all power belongs. Surely. 
surely comes to pass All power belongs to you All power, all power belongs to you God To you Lord, you alone To you God, to you alone All the power, yeah, to you is in you. In Christ alone, my hope is found. My song, this cornerstone, this solid ground.
have led us in worship this morning and Lord in the name of Jesus we ask that your flame of tongues will rest on each of them 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 hallelujah yes Lord thank you Jesus yes Lord oh we thank you father we thank you that you hold us and you will always hold us because you are our God and you are our father and you don't let us go thank you Jesus oh praise your Lord you may have your seat Praise God. Good to see you this morning. And if you haven't come to church in a while and you've only been watching us on YouTube, we want to invite you to come to church too. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, I just want to say two things. One is that on Saturday coming, Saturday at the end of this week, the first Saturday in March, um, the mobilization prayer group is coming here at 9 on Saturday morning to pray. They pray from 9 to 11 each first Saturday of the month, but they pray in a different church. And so over the past few years, they have been praying in Agape in the month of March. So if you would like to come on Saturday at 9 o'clock, um, we are praying from 9 to 11. Uh, Reverend Shockness, who uh, organizes this prayer, is very prompt. If there is one person here at 9, she starts. And when it's 11 o'clock, she stops. So you don't need to bother about it going on and on. And she goes from 9 to 11. So if you'd like to come on Saturday morning at 9, 
we are having all the usual things. You wear your mask, you sit in family groups, in household groups only, you wash your hands as you come in and so on. So that's one thing on Saturday morning. And then please, we ask that don't give money to anybody who asks. Please don't give money to anyone. We give food, not money, because you don't know what people are going to do with the money you give them. You see what I mean? And people who ask for money usually don't buy food with it. And so you may be enabling an addict if you give money. If anybody needs money for a legitimate reason, they can talk to myself or to Brother Sherwin and we will definitely see about helping them. But please don't give money to anyone, okay? Hallelujah. Now in a little while, we want to begin this morning in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Now in a little while, we are going to be having communion. And so I thought I would talk to you a little this morning about the communion scripture. 1 Corinthians 11 from verse 23. It says this. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. And that's what I want to talk to you about this morning, till he comes. Now, when I got saved a long, long time ago, before many of you were born, all that we talked about in church, all that was preached from the pulpit was, till he comes. All you heard about in church was, get saved, the Lord is coming. Get saved, the Lord is coming. That's all we heard in church. And you thought, he's going to come tomorrow. And some people got very carried away. You know, Jesus says, nobody knows when he is going to come. But some people got very carried away. They sold their house. They gave away all their uh, stuff, all their appliances, all their, all their stuff. They dressed themselves in white robes and they went up on a hill and they said, Jesus is coming on X date, whatever the date was. And of course, he didn't come because nobody knows when that is going to happen. Jesus said so. So if anybody tells you Jesus is coming on the 25th of June, 2022, say, well, that's not true. <laughs> because you can be sure they didn't hear that from God. And even if they said God said so, God didn't say so. Sorry. You know, people like to say, the Lord told me this and thus says the Lord. If you hear thus says the Lord, Jesus is coming on the 25th of August, whenever, tell them, no, the Lord did never, never, never say that. Never. But we are to gather together with the bread and the wine until he comes. You see, and this is what being together around the bread and the wine, it says, it's a, it's a way of saying, Jesus is coming again. And you say, but you don't say anything. You don't say Jesus is coming again. Yes, you do. You know the saying, actions speak louder than words? Mm -hmm. Well, this is an action that speaks very loudly. And you say, but nobody takes us on. We here in church, nobody, unless you watch uh, YouTube, you're not going to see us. We're not speaking to anybody. Yes, you are. You see, there are, there are persons who are seen, like us, and then there are persons who are unseen. You know that? 
There are persons who are unseen. There are several persons who are unseen who are with us this morning. And some of us wish us well. Some of them are messengers of God to help us. And some of them not in our favor at all. <laughs> So when we gather around the communion table, we are saying to people who are, well, not people, persons who are unseen, Jesus is coming again. Now, at the time that the Apostle Paul wrote this, Jesus had already come. He came to earth. He came as a human being, a seen person like you and me. He died a humiliating death. He came back from death to life again, which is the most wonderful thing in the world. That is why we are not afraid to die, because Jesus has already gone through death and come back from it, and he can take us through death. Does that mean that I must wish for death? No. God tells us very clearly we are to choose life, and we are to get up every day and choose life. But it means that if we face death, we can face death with our faith in Jesus because he has gone through it and come back from it. So he knows what's going on. Not only that, but Jesus has already gone to heaven. In Acts chapter 1, they said, Lord, you're going to make Israel a uh, an independent nation again we could really do with that you know lord the, the romans now nah, we can't take them on no more and jesus said well no that is not in view now what is in view is that you must be my witnesses where you live and in ever widening circles and then i will come back and then we will see what will happen the father doesn't give out information like that and so Till he comes, we gather around the communion table. We, we speak with the bread and the wine. We say, till he comes, till he comes back from heaven. But he wants us to remember certain things when we come to the table to join together in communion. Today, he wants us to remember that this communion will only continue till he comes, till he comes back. You see, after he comes back, we're not going to need communion to gather together because we're going to be with him in person. Praise God. So we need to remember today when we gather to, together with, to, to take the bread and the cup that Jesus is still coming. Now, 600 years before Jesus came into the world, the prophet Isaiah wrote this. Isaiah chapter 9 from verse 6. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. You know it well. We read it every Christmas. But this isn't Christmas, but it's a great time to read this verse. It says, For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Now, you know the difference between the child and the son. The child means he's a human child. He's a baby. He's helpless, just like all of us were when we were born. But a son is given, talks about whose son he is. Now, in Scripture, we are told that he's the son in three senses. He's the son of God. Being the son of God means that Jesus is divine. He is God. Jesus is God. That's what it means when we say Jesus is the Son of God. He's divine. Secondly, he is also called the Son of David. Lots of times in Scripture we see that he's called the Son of David. And David was a king. Therefore, when we hear about Jesus being the Son of David, what we are hearing is that he is royalty. Now, the Queen of England is royalty, and there are a few other monarchs in the world. I think there's a king in Thailand, and then there is a king in Saudi Arabia, and maybe some other places that I can't remember. But these are merely human royalty. 
This is divine royalty. You see, this is the royalty before whom we bow. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is divine royalty. That's why um, Jesus asked the Pharisees the question. He said, who do you think I am? And he said, why did David say the Lord said to my Lord, wait at my right hand until I make my enemies your footstool? And they couldn't answer him because he was the son of David. But he was also David's descendant. So the Lord said to my Lord, wait here. I'm going to make your enemies your footstool. And then he himself referred to himself, Jesus, as the son of man. What does that mean? It means that he was a human being like us. And you know what that means? It means that right now in heaven, there is a human being sitting at the right hand of God representing us. Someone who has been through everything, every temptation that you and I have ever had. And there he represents us because he's never sinned. He has died. He has come back from death. He can take us through. He can take us there. And it's a human being who sits at the right hand of God representing us. We could not want better representation than that. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. So it says, unto us a child is born, a helpless human child, but unto us the son of God, the son of man, the son of David, is given and the government will be upon his shoulder. Now, I don't see that happening, do you? I see that we have a president and a prime minister and a minister, a uh, chief minister of the opposition, Jesus and Renan. I see other governments all over the world and they are not led by Jesus either. So that means that that has not happened yet, but it will happen when he comes you see what has happened is the next thing and his name will be called wonderful oh yes jesus you are wonderful mm. his name will be called counselor because he wants to fill us with his wisdom when we read his word his name will be called mighty god because he is the the captain the general of heaven's armies. That's what it means by Lord of hosts, which of course means nothing to us. We don't know what hosts are. But Lord of hosts means he is the general of heaven's armies. Everlasting father. His fathering never comes to an end. It doesn't matter if you are nine months old or nine years old, or 99 years old, we all need his fathering. We, all, we never cease to need a father. And he is the everlasting father. And then he is the prince of peace. You see, the thing is that the, what everyone in the world is looking for is peace. Of course, some people's lifestyle push throws peace out of the window regularly. And then some people want to go away into the mountains and just meditate and be at peace. And, but they found that they had to take themselves to the mountain and the peace was not there, so they didn't get any peace in the mountain, you see. But Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And verse 7 says, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. So we know that hasn't happened yet, but it is coming when he comes upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice. One of the things I have found that bothers human beings more than anything else is injustice. They do miss something and they never seem to have paid for it. And all of us struggle with injustice and we are going to continue to struggle with injustice until 
he comes because his government is going to be with judgment and justice from that time forward even forever in other words when he establishes his government on the in the earth when the government is upon his shoulders then there will be judgment and justice in the earth forever forever it will never come to an end won't that be nice never having to say lord when will you bring forth my light as the noonday and clear my name no more injustice hallelujah and then it says the zeal of the lord of hosts will perform this and you say well what on earth does that mean all it means is that the lord the general of heaven's armies is determined to do this the zeal of the Lord means the determination of the Lord is for this. This is what God is determined to do in the earth. He's determined to put the government upon the shoulders of Jesus. But that's going to happen when he comes. You got it? Now we want to, that was 600 years before Jesus was born that the uh, prophet Isaiah wrote that. Now we want to come to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1 and we want to talk about Jesus again Luke 1 from verse 26 now in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent to God sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David the virgin's name was Mary and having come in the angel said to her rejoice highly favored one the Lord is with you blessed are you among women and many people get stuck on that scripture but it goes on when Mary saw him she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was in other words what it is this man saying to me then the angel said to her do not be afraid Mary because you have found favor with God and behold you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son son of God son of David son of man and you will call his name Jesus Jesus means Savior and Jesus is a common name it was a common name among the people of that day and it's a common name in the uh, Spanish-speaking world now everybody is Jesus you know verse 32 he will be great and he will be called the son of the highest and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David son of David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end but this will happen when he comes and so when we come around the table and we take the bread and the cup this is what we are saying we are saying that he will be great he will be called the son of the highest and everybody will do this you see at that time when he comes and the Lord will give him the throne of his father David he will rule the land of Israel and he will reign forever and of his kingdom there will be no end so whether you believe him or you don't believe him once you're alive at that time you're going to be in his kingdom and it's never going to come to an end hallelujah now let's look at the book of Daniel because Daniel talks a lot about when he comes praise God Daniel chapter 7 in the first year of Belshazzar king of Babylon and if you read Daniel chapter 5 you will find out what kind of person this Belshazzar was he was not a sensible person he was not wise in godly things as a matter of fact he was a big fool but 
in the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head while on his bed. Then he wrote down the dream, telling the main facts. So he had a long dream with a lot of details in it, but when he wrote it down, he only wrote down the main facts. So here are the main facts. Now, this dream is like um, watching a movie on a split screen. On the up, upper part of the screen, we see what's happening in heaven, and on the lower part of the screen, we see what's happening here on earth. So this is a dream on a split screen. So, Daniel spoke, verse 2, saying, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven were stirring up the great sea. And we could talk about that for ages, but we're moving on. And the four great and four great beasts came up out of the sea, each different from the other. So this part of the dream is taking part uh, taking place on the lower part of the screen of this movie that Daniel saw when he was sleeping. And you know how dreams can be like movies. Whoa! <laughs> Verse 4. The first beast was like a lion, had eagle's wings. I watched till its wings were plucked off, and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand on two feet like a man, and a man's heart was given to it. But now, one thing we notice about these four beasts is that they are all arrogant and they are all destructive. This beast represented a very ancient king who we will not get into right now. So he was like a lion. And verse 5 says, suddenly another beast, a second like a bear. So in other words, we get the impression that since this, the bear came suddenly upon the lion, that the bear defeated the lion. The bear destroyed the lion, which did happen, but we're not going there right now. It was raised up on one side and had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. So this is a really destructive creature. And they said thus to it, arise, devour much flesh. So you know, in this era, a lot of human beings are going to die a very terrible death, and it did happen arrogant and destructive. Verse 6, after this I looked and there was another, this is the third beast, like a leopard, which had on its back four wings of a bird. The beast also had four heads and dominion was given to it, arrogant and destructive. So all those kingdoms have passed into history. But this fourth one is the one in which we are now alive. Verse 7, after this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, exceedingly strong. It had huge iron teeth. Now the others looked like animals. This one looks like nothing Daniel had ever seen. It had terrible iron teeth. It was devouring, breaking in pieces, trampling the residue with its feet. In other words, more human beings dying and being destroyed. It was different from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. I was considering the horns, and there was another horn, a little one, coming up from among them, before whom three of the first horns were plucked out by the roots. In other words, there were 10 kings in this kingdom, uh, which we will not get into right now. And then a little more arrogant one get up and say, get, 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 threw out three of them and stuck himself up because I am better than all of them. <laughs> you see? And there in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and mouth and a mouth speaking pompous words. I am the Christ. Worship me. Those were the pompous words I believe he spoke. But now the, the action in the dream changes to heaven. We go to the upper part of the screen now. Verse 9. I watched till thrones were put in place and the ancient of days was seated. This is God the Father now. And this looks very much, this verse 9, looks very much like what we find in a description of heaven in Revelations chapters 
4 and 5. His garments, the ancient of days. You remember we sing a song? Blessing and honor, glory and power, be unto the ancient of days. That's where they get the scripture. That's, that's the scripture that that song was built on. His garment was white as snow, and the hairs of his head was pure like wool. In other words, everything about God is pure. There's no corruption, no arrogance, no violence, nothing that has been happening in the lower part of the screen. His throne was a fiery flame. In other words, judgment time. It's wheels burning like a burning fire. Um, in the book of Ezekiel, the throne of God is pictured on wheels, and these wheels can go anywhere. And so you understand that God is giving judgment and justice everywhere that people call upon his name. He can be there because his throne is on wheels. Verse 10. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. A thousand thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. So this throne room of God is a huge place because all these uh, beings who are ministering to him, I believe they're angels. We are not there yet. The court was seated, so this is a courtroom setting, and the books were opened. And Jesus says, make sure your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And you say, well, how do I get my name there? You get your name there by asking Jesus to be your savior, asking him to cleanse you with his blood and put you in his family, and he, he has your name in the Lamb's book of life. And this is the book that was opened, so it's time for judgment. Then the, the scene changes back to earth. I watched then because the sound of the pompous words which the horn was speaking. Horn in the Bible always means a strong person. When, the Lord, when in the book of Psalms it says, Lord, exalt my horn, what it means is give me your strength. Horn always has to do with strength, because when an animal has horns, you know it's coming for you. You see, so whenever the Bible talks about horns, it means strength. So this, this little pompous horn that was always talking was a strong ruler. And he was bragging and boasting. I watched till this beast was slain, and its body destroyed and given to the burning flame. As for the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. And then the, the action switches back to heaven. Verse 13, I was watching in the night seasons, and behold, one like the Son of Man, the one who is now representing us in heaven, the human being who came as a human being, died, a very humiliating death and came back from life. This one, the son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the ancient of days. He came into God's court and they brought him near before him. Then was given to him dominion and glory and a kingdom. Where is this kingdom? It's here in the earth. And all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion. It never comes to an end, which shall not pass away. And his kingdom, the one which shall not be destroyed. All the human kingdoms, the four beasts that we saw, they had an end. They were destroyed. The kingdom of Jesus will never be destroyed. It goes on forever and ever with judgment and justice. Hallelujah. Verse 15. And then it switches back to earth. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit within my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. And then he went into heaven and he said, I came near to one who stood by and asked him the truth of all this. In other words, he's saying to me, explain this to me. What does this mean? 
So he told me and made me to know the interpretation of these things. Those great beasts, which are four, are four kings which arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. In other words, if you don't understand the first forever, it's forever and ever. Hallelujah. But the saints of the Most High, yes, shall receive the kingdom. Verse 19. Then I wished to know the explanation or the truth about the fourth beast, which was different from all the others. Exceedingly dreadful. With teeth of iron, its nails of bronze, which devoured. In other words, a lot of human beings were killed. Broke in pieces and trampled the residue with its feet. No human uh, consideration at all. And the ten horns that were on its head, and the other little horn which came up before which the three fell, namely the horn that had eyes and a mouth which spoke bragging and pompous words, whose appearance was greater than his fellows. I was watching, and the same strong ruler, the same horn, was making war against the saints of God. Hmm. And he prevailed against them. Lord, where are you? Until the Ancient of Days came and a judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High. And the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. This is when he comes. So all this is still to come. You think that COVID is bad? There will be other things too. I believe that COVID is just the beginning of the end of this age of human history. And we are gathering around God's table today to, re to proclaim his lordship until he comes and all of this happens. So the Jesus kind of kingdom is like this. It is unlimited. He has given complete dominion over the whole earth. That's what's going to happen. It's a unique kingdom. It's full of goodness and kindness to human beings. All the others devoured and trampled. It's full of the glory of God. It says the earth shall be filled with the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. Thirdly, the kingdom of the Lord Jesus is unified. Everybody fighting everybody now. You notice human governments, this one in, in uh, power today and the next day somebody else take over by elections or by army or by killing people that's how human beings are we always struggling against each other for power and chaos and corruption reign the kingdom of Jesus is unified the kingdom of Jesus is universal it extends over the whole earth nobody is outside of it whether you believe him or not you find yourself in it. The kingdom of Jesus is unconquerable. It will not be destroyed and it will not be taken over by any other ruler. Hallelujah. And then the kingdom of Jesus is unending. There will be no more fear of destruction or upheaval. It will go on forever and ever with judgment and justice. Isn't that wonderful? So we want to read our last scripture now. This is what God says that we must do until he comes. Revelation chapter 22 from verse 16. And I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and offspring of David. In other words, David is my ancestor, but I am also the offspring of David. The bright and morning star. When we are in a dark place in our life, Jesus is the bright and morning star. And the spirit, that is the Holy Spirit, and the bride, that is those of us who believe in Jesus. The Holy Spirit and the company of believers in the earth says, come. Why do we say that? Because we are saying, Come back, Lord Jesus. We are waiting for you to come and establish judgment and justice in the earth. That's what we want. We want an earth free of corruption and chaos and fighting and all those kinds of things that make for no peace. This is what we want. 
the Holy Spirit and the body of Christ says, come. Let anyone who hears say, come. Let him who thirsts, come. If you are thirsty on the inside and everything is dry inside of you, Jesus says, you come. You come to me and you say, Lord, fill me up. You know, there's a lovely little song I, I haven't sung in a long time, and it goes like this. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no Fill my cup, fill me up, and make me whole. So let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. Hallelujah. It doesn't cost you anything, only your life. It costs my life, yes, because you've got to give your life to Jesus. Verse 20, he who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Well, evidently, God's quickly and our quickly aren't exactly the same thing, you see, because he's been coming quickly since this verse was written 2,000 years ago. <laughs> and then it says, even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we thank you. Lord Jesus, we bow before you this morning, for you are the Son of Man. You represent us as a human being in heaven. Lord, you are the Son of David. You are royalty, and we bow before you but you are the son of God. And Lord, you are divine royalty and all majesty, all glory, all power belong to you. All power, all glory, no, no, no. All power, belong to you all, all power all honor all glory all power to you holy father Worship him. to thank you we thank you that we can gather around your table and share together the bread and the cup until you come Lord fill us with the sense of when you come so that we can walk triumphant in Jesus name amen hallelujah
Praise the Lord. We give the Lord praise and thanks for his word this morning. You know, as Pastor Grace um, read from the scriptures, the Lord said, as often as we drink this cup and we eat the bread, we do it in remembrance of him. We proclaim till the Lord. We proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. I know, brothers and sisters, when we remember Jesus' death, we have to remember that because of that, we have eternal life. And that our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So we give God praise and thanks that every time we gather around the table, there is so many benefits to get from that, that we need to ponder in it and ask God that he would continue to reveal each day what he has done for us. You know, we sometimes we just take it for granted, but what Jesus did for us, he said, greater love had no man that he laid down his life for us. And no one wanted to lay down the life for someone else, but Jesus did it for us. So we give God praise and thanks this morning for the privilege and opportunity that we can gather around the Lord's table. So at this time, I'll ask the ushers, all the one, all, everyone who helps with the table, I'd like you to come so we can partake of it. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fairest drought and storm. What tides of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving morning saints. Uh, I just want to read a short article that they have here and I want to remember also the person who have provided me with this book. Uh, it's a sister, a dear sister of ours that normally whenever we gather, before we gather in the past to have communion, she would call me and she would use these words, Jesus loves you. And I would say, he loves you too. And she will come back and say, I will come back to her and say that, say that um, she will say she's blessed and beautiful. Many of us will know who that is. That is Sister Winnie. I mean, we miss her greatly because she hasn't been able to come out within recent times, as so have some others. You know, I remember the, the Rudders and the Josephs, you know, and we miss them greatly. And I know they are with us in spirit and they are listening on to the, the YouTube message. One of the books that I got from her is The Daily Bread. Over the last 15 years or so, she has always provided one. The article is entitled Great News. Now, the article in the local newspaper was short, but heartwarming. After attending a faith-based program on building stronger family ties, a group of prison inmates were given a rare treat of an open visit with their families. Some hadn't seen their children in years. Instead of taking, talking through a glass panel, they could touch and hold loved ones. The tears flowed freely as families grew closer and wounds began to heal. For most readers, it was just a story, but for those families holding one another was a life-changing event. And for some, 
the process, the process of forgiveness and reconciliation was begun. So God's forgiveness of our sin and offer of reconciliation made possible through his son is more than a mere fact of the Christian faith. The article's news of reconciliation reminds us that Jesus' sacrifice is great news, not just for the world, but for you and me. So at this time, as we gather around the Lord's table, you know, we remember these things. And I just pray that, you know, we have a time of reflection of the things past and the things present and all that we have gone through and ask God for his forgiveness for our sins. So let us share the emblems, the grape juice and the bread as we get into it.
When he gave thanks, he broke the bread. He said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. That's all it. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This is a cup. This cup is a new covenant in my blood that this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's all drink. Father God, we give you thanks for your body that was broken for us, for your blood that was poured out for our redemption, for our sins. And Lord God, we pray, Lord, as we receive your body and blood, that you will heal us from every illness, every disease. Lord God, strengthen us in our body. Make us worthy of receiving this. In Jesus' name, amen. On Christ the Son. Home here in the 
is a solid rock we stand all other ground is sinking sand lord god we call upon you because you are the rock lord god and we know that you are god you are the most high god lord god they ask who you are and we can say you are the god you are the christ you are the son of the living god and lord god we thank you for your blood today we thank you lord god that we can share in obedience in remembrance of you lord and your sacrifice we can share these emblems today because lord in your blood there is victory Oh Lord, we stand. No power of a hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck us, Lord, from your hand. And we declare on you alone we stand in Jesus' mighty name. We bring this nation before you. Lord God, we stand, we say, you are the glory and the lifter of our head. And Lord God, we can give you praise in a turbulent time because you alone are God. Lord God, we pray that your blessing blood prevail oh there is power there is power there is wonder working power in the blood of the lamb and we claim that power this morning in our life and in our land oh wonder working power in the precious blood of the lamb and lord god your blood prevails today the blood of the bleeding lamb has power to save just as in olden days the blood prevails and it come with that prevailing blood through this country through this church through every family represented here on us oh lord every one of us lord god we pray that you will arise and let the enemy be scattered lord in this country we pray lord that all this horrible violence will cease lord god because you will strike them down the voice of the lord will shatter the enemy the voice of the lord will strike them down every blow the Lord lays on them will be unto the music as he strikes them with blows of his arm we cut down all that unrighteous we cut down all that is wicked and is violence and the Lord God Jesus we pray that you will have your way you say I am the way the truth and the life and Lord God we lift you up because when we lift you up in this church when you lift you up in this country you will draw all men unto you and Lord God, we pray that individually we lift our hands. Church, lift your hands this morning. Lift your hands and declare right now that you place all your trust in Jesus. Place all your trust in him. Because he is the one to give you victory. He is the one to pull you through. Oh, he is the one we sing on Christ the solid rock I stand. Now trust him at his word. We sang his words his words shall be fulfilled we got the message this morning and his words shall be fulfilled and so we put our trust in you jesus every single one of us we put our trust in you for our bodies for our healing for our mind for our spirit lord god we say you are faithful god and your mercies are new every morning morning by morning new mercies i see and lord god we pray that as we trust you you give us the victory lord the victory in our families in our workplace lord in the church in this country of trinidad and tobago oh lord god do you let them know that your prophets your anointed is to be done no harm and we stand as your anointed lord god and we declare no harm shall come above us none of the knows oh lord god we pray that we will have a good report whose report will we believe we believe 
the report of the Lord. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the victory. We thank you for your blood. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that it prevails. In Jesus' name, and the church says, Amen. amen. Hallelujah, somebody. And amen. The voice of the Lord shall shut the enemy. The voice of the Lord will strike them down. The voice of the Lord shall shatter the enemy. The voice of the Lord will strike them down. The voice, the voice of the Lord will shatter the enemy. The voice of the Lord will strike them down. The voice, the voice of the seated. You know, brothers and sisters, uh, as Minister Deborah was praying and she said, we need to put our trust in the Lord. And uh, he's the only one that have the power to keep us safe. No matter how safe we may try to be or whatever we may do, only God has the power to keep us safe. And as the word of God says, no one is able to pluck us out of his hands. So we give God praise and thanks so much this morning for his word that we were able to stand before him and give him the highest praises of our hearts. Amen. At this time, we'll ask the ushers to come as we take up the morning tithes and offering. The voice of the Lord will shatter the enemy. The voice of the Lord will strike them down. The voice of the Lord will shatter the enemy. The voice of the Lord will strike the voice of the Lord. Will shatter the enemy. The voice of the Lord will strike them. The voice, the voice of the The voice of the Lord will shatter and every every stroke the Lord lays on them will be unto the music and every stroke the Lord lays on them will be to the music as he fights them with blows of his arm.
Father, we thank you, God, for the tithes and offerings of your people. We thank you, God, for the sacrifices they have made, O oh God, to give of their substance. Father, we thank you, God, for the health and strength that you have given each and every one of us to work so that we can be a blessing unto you. We ask, O oh God, a return unto each and every one, Father, a hundredfold. Father, those who are unemployed, we ask, O oh God, that you provide work for them, Father. For you said, O oh God, if a man don't work, he shouldn't eat. And we know that your people want to eat, so they have to work. And so, Lord, we just thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Father, we ask, O oh God, that you help us to use these funds, that your kingdom may be extended, and your word, O oh, oh God, will go forth and proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so, Father, to you be all the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. On Wednesday, we have our prayer at 6 in the evening. You can join us on Zoom and be a partaker of, of it. You can also enjoy it in the comfort of your home. The book table is open. So we have some good books at the back. If you want to get one for yourself, that is good. But you can also get one for someone else who you can be a blessing on to them. Do we have any more announcements? Good morning, church. Hope everyone is doing well. Um, this is an announcement on behalf of the Agape Youth Ministry, or AYM, right? That's our new name, right? And um, we'll be having our first outdoor event coming up this Saturday on March 6th, right? Now, isn't that something? We're actually getting outside, all right? Um, this is our first, first outdoor meeting. And we really want to invite all the youths 13 years and over to come out, right? Now, COVID-19, yes, we know he exists. But we can't allow him to shut us down, right? We can't allow him to stop us from living, right? So we have to live, but we're going to be observing all the protocols of COVID-19, all right? So when you come, it's going to be a picnic style, but you have to come with your snacks and your blankets and everything. But make sure and come with your mask, right? So it'll be your snacks and your mask. It'll be your friend and your mask, right? Everything will be, make sure you have on your mask or your face shield, right? And so if you haven't yet indicated that you'll be coming, we really want you to do so on the chat. Or you can um, tell any one of the, the leaders or, uh, well, uh, um, Simon and Kathy, Vanessa and Justin, and myself and Jonathan, who's here this morning, members of the committee, right? So um, we're looking forward to seeing everyone on Saturday. We're going out and have, get some sun. If you haven't gotten sun in a while, you could come out, all right? And we're looking forward to seeing everybody, okay? So have yourselves a great rest of the day. Thank you. Hi, good morning, everyone. This is an announcement for all men All men, Agape Bible Ministries, here and Guanapo, all men are invited. We want to have a breakfast, right, on April the 3rd. Keep that in mind, April the 3rd, we're starting at 8.30. 8.30, April the 3rd. What day that is? That's a Saturday. <laughs> That's a Saturday, right? April the 3rd. They, we are going to have a caterer. Her name is Sister Pearl. Anybody know her? All right. So you know what she gives. Good food, right? So we know we can expect something good on that day for breakfast. And then we're going to have, we're going to move into some, some other things that we want to, the men of Agape to learn and to 
be part of, all right? So that is April 3rd, 8.30, Men of Agape, Guanapo and Kirep. We're meeting here, the sanctuary upstairs. You know where that is? Remember, Pastor named it the sanctuary. Pastor Sam, all right, God willing, we're going to be here April 3rd. All right, um, more announcements will come as time permits. We are going to charge a small fee, all right? This is for the breakfast. This is for the caterer. $50, five zero. Is that too much? And you're going to get a belly buster. You know what that is, right? The men, we know what that is, right? Belly buster, all right? So stay tuned for more announcements. Thank you. Hallelujah. You know, brothers and sisters, sometimes when I look on YouTube and I see all the little antics that takes place while we change in the muffs and so on, you know, it, it really makes you laugh a little bit. Eh? But soon we'll have that under control because we are getting a few more mics, microphones, but they're in order right now. So that will come to an end soon. At this time, we want to pray for birthdays. Anyone celebrating their birthday today or the coming week? We want you to come and we want to pray with you. You know, birdies are very important. Okay. Hallelujah. A happy birthday to you. Every day of the year, may you feel Jesus near. A happy birthday. Father, this morning we lift up his son before you. Father, we thank you, God, for him being able to celebrate another birthday upon this earth. Father, we declare that the days ahead would be better than the days that went by. We ask, oh God, that you bless him with good health and strength, soundness of mind and body, so that he can continue working in the vineyard. Father, we thank you, God, for him. We thank you, God, for all that you're doing in his life. We pray, oh God, that if Jesus should tarry, you promise him three scores and ten, and by reason of hell, ten years, and even extra years until he's satisfied. So we as your people, O oh God, surround him with our faith and love, and we bless him, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Do we have anyone visiting here for the very first time? Could you please stand? Any visitors? Anyone visiting for the very first time? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We are happy to have you with us. And saints, make sure and greet her before she leaves. Let, her, let us make sure that we make her feel welcome in this house. Let's all stand. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for all that took place here this morning. Father, it was such a joy and privilege, O oh God, to God as your people and to be in your presence, praising and worshiping you and sitting at the feet of the Holy Spirit of God and learning more of you. Father, we pray, O oh God, that we wouldn't only be hearers of your word, but we'd be doers of your word, Father, so that we can fulfill your divine purpose for each and every life that is here, Father. Father, as we go to our homes, we ask that you take us in safety. And I declare that your word says, Surely goodness and mercies shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God bless you, and have a wonderful week. Oh, give, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he oh, is give good. thanks, oh, give thanks unto the Oh, he is.
Unto the 